Hi right, guys, Robert McGowan here. So I'm out having a wee drive and I thought I'd give you a wee update um, on my hair transplant um, experience. It's almost seven weeks since I had it um, done. Had it done at the start of December, December the 1st. So yeah, almost seven weeks. Um, so I thought I'd give you a wee update on how things have been going to this point. So yeah, I had a DHI um, hair transplant procedure done in Turkey uh, on December the 1st and it was the DHI method. I never chose the DHI method specifically. Uh, the clinic advised me that that was the best method for me and I, I trusted their opinion, having done my own research as well into FUI, and, sorry, FUE and FUT and DHI methods. Um, so in the end I had 4,600 grafts, uh, 500 of which were from my beard area. Um, they can take grass from your beard area or your chest area as well if you are, you know, if your donor area isn't sufficient enough. Um, that's been the, the sides and the back of your head. I was a Norwood 5 scale on the baldness scale, um, so fairly thin up top, receding hairline and um, bald patch at the back and thin on the crown. So when I first went, we discussed the possibility of, of covering all of my bald areas, be it the hairline, the, the crown and the back bald parts, and they actually thought that 4,600 grafts might do this. Having done my own research, I actually believed otherwise, I, I, you know, in my opinion, I thought it could be better to focus on getting some sort of density on the front um, and leave the back out, and I thought if this worked, if it worked well enough, I would come back and have the crown done and hopefully it wouldn't take so many grafts. So that's what I had done. So here's the big reveal. Um, as you can see, I am firmly in what they call the ugly duckling stage, and that is where your, where your hair falls out after it's been transplanted. This can happen any time after you've had your hair transplanted. Um, within a few days to a week or so after the procedure, your hair can start falling out. Um, it's a natural part of the process, you know. Strangely enough, mine didn't actually fall out much. I had noticed some very slight um, thinning around about here, but I didn't notice any hairs coming out up until about day 28, when I was just starting to think that I may be one of the 5% where hair doesn't shed. Um, mine shed quite dramatically, almost in a 24 hour period. And I saw it on the pillowcase when I got up in the morning, and um, it's a bit disappointing, guys, right? I mean, really, I mean, you're expecting it because you know it's going to happen and you know it's normal and it's part of the process. However, you're still a bit disappointed when it happens because up until then, your hair's looking quite good. People are complimenting you, saying it looks quite good, and uh, you kind of get used to it, your new hairline and everything. Um, and it's all very positive, but then all of a sudden it just <laughs> falls out and you find it. It's like we, it's like we kind of hockey stick sort of looking hairs uh, sort of straight with a curve at the end and they all just come out but of course they're pushing out the new hair underneath um, which is which is growing so getting a close up to my scalp you can look straight in um, as you can see it's still a wee bit red looking um, and there's actually a wee slight bit of numbness still um, just round about where I'm pointing right now you know, it's not it's not entirely numb, but just a I can feel just a little tiny bit of the, the anaesthetic still there actually. Um, but I've had no problems, I've had no pain, I've had no discomfort, I've had no anything. Um, you can actually see. I'll just show you around the donor area as well. With this this car is past here. I'll take you around the side there. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, other side. Hopefully you can get a good look up close. And I'll do the back as well. You can see the, the kind of bald spots there as well. Hopefully I got that camera angle right. It's hard to get it correct. I'll just bend down so you can see. Um, so yeah, so I haven't done the crown area. So you can see the bald spots at the back. Um, they'll be getting done next if I'm happy with the results um, of this uh, procedure. So again, yeah, nearly seven weeks, just about seven weeks there. Um, and you can actually see wee tiny hairs starting to peek through a little tiny bit. So they're pushing through, the hair goes through like kind of various cycles. Um, and when it does start to push through, it'll probably grow about maybe half a centimetre a month, something like that. I'm expecting to see some more new growth uh, soon. You can actually see this wee tuft here was my native hair. And the wee kind of fluffy bits round about it are, are some of the hairs that actually didn't come out. Not all the hair that get transplanted um, should might come out. Some of it might stay. 
and it's very fine when, it, when, your, when, your, when your hair starts to grow back in, it's, it comes in very fine at first and then slowly over time it starts to kind of thicken up. Um, so that's where we are. I'm expecting maybe after the two month period, I'll maybe start to see more of the same, just starting to kind of get little fluffy bits appearing. I'm not expecting any real results until maybe month five, six-ish, when you should start to see, you might see the hairline coming in before then, but the density, um, or the, the illusion of uh, density, probably won't happen for a good few months yet. So I've got to try and be patient, and that's probably the hardest part for me, because I'm not usually a very patient person. <laughs> or I, I try to be anyway, but when you're looking forward to something like this, you know, you're kind of wanting to see results kind of quick, I suppose. Um, only natural. So one of the most common questions I get asked when I tell people about it, is uh, was it painful? Was the procedure painful? Um, the answer is not really. <laughs> it was a little bit painful. Um, having the anaesthetic done uh, was a little bit nippy because you get it in your neck and you get it in your, the back of your head. Uh, but let's be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. It wasn't. It wasn't really painful, right? I mean, there was a little bit of nippiness when you feel the thing going in, but it was over very quick and I would not let that put you off having it done. I've heard people saying it was very painful. Some people say they never felt anything. I felt a little bit of pain, but nothing nothing that would put you off having it done. And if this works at all, then it's certainly worth doing, um, in my opinion. So, so that's really it. Um, so far, the experience has been pretty positive. If you're considering having your hair transplant um, in Turkey, I would recommend it. Um, it's about a third of the price of the UK. Um, and very professional, very well done, in good hands, everything went everything went really well actually. Um, there was no negatives that I can really think about. Probably, probably the worst thing for me was probably the waiting on the thing, waiting on the, the day of the operation seemed to kind of drag in a little bit. But the procedure itself was, was perfectly fine, so if you're considering having your hair transplant um, done, I would recommend it, and I would recommend Turkey as well. So that's really it guys, I hope you've got some kind of value for this wee update. Um, I will give you further updates as the months go by, so that you can see for yourself what this is really like, um, and decide for yourself if it's something you would like to pursue. Right guys, give us a wee thumbs up and a like, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.